Andrew Cruzy here, and we're going to go through the ins and outs of your task board. For you and your team, it will help you easily delegate new tasks. I'm going to show you a few things that will help you speed up uh, your ability to delegate tasks as well. So if you're ready for it, we'll hop in. The first thing that you want to do in your task board is make sure all of your team members are here, and I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. So we just hired a new client success manager. So I'm going to go up here to share in the upper right. I'm going to put in her email and I make them creator. Um, I feel good about them seeing everything. And if they ever delete anything, we can always revert back to a previous version using this button. So I'm going to hit invite. <clears throat> and now she is in our air table. And from here, what I want to do is go up here and hit duplicate and go up here to collective view and then rename this one. And she's in client success. So I'm just going to shake, continue this. I'm going to hit shake. There we go. And give this to Lauren. Lauren's tasks. And then I'm going to go up to the filter responsibility, make sure I'm on her. And then I'm going to switch it over to Lauren. It's as easy as that. And now she has her own task board. And what I might want to do, assign her a task right away, um, fill out the team <clears throat> uh, onboarding form. And I'll give her a task for today and give her, takes about 10 minutes to fill that out. Urgency, impacts, medium, and the status will automatically move to today. And then I'm gonna find that form by going over to team, go over to onboarding, go over to share form, and then move back over here. And I'm gonna put the form right in there. And then, <clears throat> We use these team forms uh, to know their vision and more about them. So it makes it a lot easier when we're doing a team review call. So that's one of the first things that we do um, for bringing on a new team member. And we've got that in there for her. We could also create a project right here and say uh, on board, on, on board. Lauren up to KPI and that will be my responsibility and let's say I want to get that done by the end of February and it's very impactful very important 100 out of zero and then I can start putting tasks underneath that project so I'll type in Lauren boom and now you can see underneath project tasks right here, onboard Lauren up to KPI. So we've got those tasks underneath there. We've also got the project or task overview right here. So we can see uh, for this project, there's one task right there uh, and it's due today. And we can see the progress towards those uh, tasks in terms of projects. So. That's how we set up a new board. That's how we can use um, projects and also uh, see the overview of the task completion towards that project. And <clears throat> then what you might be asking is how do we set up reoccurring tasks? So if we go up to automations right here, you should have these preloaded. You have daily, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can set up any of these. What I've seen people screw up on is by having too many daily tasks and then their team members get overwhelmed and they're not checking them off each day and then there's just a pile up of tasks. So don't do that, but you've got this automatically every single day. Um, this goes off on a daily basis from Monday to Friday and then you just add a new record for that task. So Michael's daily tasks she has them all written out in here and she actually created this for herself. So you can delegate this to team members to put their daily tasks in here. And then she just makes sure she does these things every day and checks it off each day. 
where we've screwed up in the past is having like a task for each daily task and it just piles up and your team members get annoyed and you don't want to do that. So the other thing are automated tasks. So this is really cool. So um, I'm going to go to this one right here, respond to Josh's uh, monthly accountability form. So um, over here, we have a monthly accountability. It's in our NPS tab, right? And when they fill out this form, then our client success manager, me right now, gets a task to respond back to that form. So you can see it says needs a response. So this is one of the coolest things about Airtable that we can set up an automation when they fill out a form or a status is changed, then, um, then we can set up an automated task for a team member. So I'm just looking for that right now. It's probably under client fulfillment. Uh, let's uh, re-enrollment phase, client fulfillment. Uh, I'll show you this example right here. So for example, <clears throat> when I'm in another board under the client calls board and I click as completed, then Myco gets a task to send that recording over to that client. So this is how it's set up. When a record match is completed, then a record is created in tasks for Myco to send over the recording. Super cool stuff. So for example, if I go to the um, client call board, let's go over here, client calls. When I go here and I finish the call with Eli today and press this as completed, she will get a task to put the recording in here and send it over to the client. So that's all automated. I want to give you guys one more idea. I shared this in the first video, but when we use the record, uh, the Airtable Clipper right here and add in a training for a team member, what that will do is drop it into trainings and then they will also get a task inside of here to review the training. So this is what that looks like. Boom. So when record is created in trainings table, then review the training and it responds to the record ID set up as today, then date created, and then it sends them the link to the training tab. So really cool stuff that can be done here. Another example is when a client is moved to at risk, then create a task for new at-risk brother, for the person who is responsible to follow up with that person. So you can automate a lot of tasks just by changing the status inside of, uh, inside of Airtable. So now, hopefully this is jogging some ideas. It's getting some brain, uh, some of the gears turning in the brain. You also have a lot of loaded automations in here for you that you can turn on. And the last thing that I wanna share, one of my favorite things, let's say I'm on school right here. Then I've set up and I think of a task for Myco or let's say Lewis here. And I've got <clears throat> this, respond to all the comments on the where are you from. post in school, something like that. And I can grab the link and put that under the details. And then I can select Lewis as being responsible and I can add that in there. And now I've just delegated a task super fast to Lewis right here, boom. So some cool things that you can do 
set up those automations, um, add in the record clipper, and also um, make sure that when you're onboarding a new team member that they fill out the team member onboarding form directly in here and also uh, use the project tasks to make sure the tasks are all outlined for those projects. So if you guys have any questions on this, let me know. Last thing that I wanna mention is we have two other statuses, ideas and notes. We don't use this too much but you have two sections in here, uh, a section for ideas for the company and a section for notes for the company as well. And you can also section it off by uh, uh, tasks due for clients. So inside of here, you can filter by clients connection is not empty and have these by, uh, by clients. So you can create any view that you want in here. Just make sure you don't overdo it. And I hope that video, this video was helpful for getting you started with tasks. Use it every single day. Make sure your team uses it every single day. Make sure that you have a policy in your business that tasks are never two days overdue. Um, so they're checking it every single day. That's about it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.